I mean, it's just numbers. It's just, it's the same thing as building a house, same thing as building a house to build a business. And uh, I truly believe every single person can do it. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. Welcome all you performance marketers, a place where you learn about affiliate marketing, lead gen arbitrage, and all that good fun stuff that we all love. My name is Eric, and today we're going to talk about something that is uh, bothering me like crazy from seeing all these, these business owners and these entrepreneurs make this major mistake on their business. And I, I just, I need to clarify how you run your business, how you have to know your numbers so you know what's going on, so that you can build a plan, and then you can execute on that plan. Today, we're going to talk about, first, working on your business versus working in your business, okay? Second thing we're going to talk about is how to analyze your numbers, how to figure out what your numbers look like to know what you're really making. Because a lot of entrepreneurs, they'll, they'll, they'll get their two-comma club award, right? They did a million dollars. Well, they're talking about the top line revenue. That's the total revenue that they got. But guess what? There's costs involved, right? When someone says they did a million dollars in revenue, it doesn't mean they're taking home a million bucks, right? So we're going to go over that and give you guys a little bit of an idea of like things that I do so that maybe it could help you along the way as you're, as you're doing this. But first, let me start with this. Here's the deal. People always talk about working on your business versus working in your business. And what does that mean, right? Well, when you start your, your business, you're wearing a lot of different hats, right? You're coming up with ideas. You're coming up with the strategies. You're thinking about what you want to do, what, you know, where you want to play, what offer you're going to run, you know, how you're going to go and, and, you know, your plan to, to buy media with these affiliates or, or these platforms, right? All of that is the strategy of what you're doing for your business, right? The working in your business is the actual execution of that plan, right? Two very different things. Um, when you first start your business, you kind of wear both hats, right? Because you just don't have any revenue coming in, right? So you can't afford that yet. But, you know, as you start to grow your business, as you start to get to a uh, a place where you're generating more revenue and you're scaling, you know, you could either stay, stay on your own, which a lot of people do, by the way. A lot of people do that. Um, certainly in the affiliate marketing space, um, uh, in the lead gen space, you can do it, right? It's it's a digital business and that's the beauty of what we're, we're all part of. I mean, um, the opportunities that present themselves here are just so unbelievable and how you can do it and scale it in such a mass way without having to have like thousands of employees like the old school way, which is really cool. The thing here is I want to talk about first thing is when you work on your business, that is you having a plan, right? When you go and you build a house, right? You go, you meet with an architect and the architect talks to you, figures out what you like. You show him maybe some pictures uh, of what you want your house to look like. So oh, I love that house down the street. or I love that house in California. Here's what I want it to look like. He takes that, he looks at it, he starts to draw up some plans, he comes back, and then he talks to you. Okay, what do you think of this? Well, I want to move that wall. Uh, I really want to just kind of push out um, my living room to the right. And I'd rather have a double ceiling. I'd rather go up 20 feet rather than having like a ceiling and 10 feet in each floor. Whatever it is, right? You're coming up with your customized plan, right? You started with something and now you're starting to customize it. And what happens is, is the architect goes, and then draws up those plans for whatever it is that you want, right? You go back and forth until you finalize the plan and you're going to sign off on it saying, yes, I'm good to go. Well, it's amazing, right? It's fun. I built my house. It was a lot of fun. If you guys have aspirations to do that, uh, yeah, it's fun. It's stressful. Um, you know, I recommend it. It's fun to be able to move into your house that you put together yourself, right? I hope every one of you have a chance to do that or at least the choice to do that one day. But with that said, right? So once we go and we have these plans finalized, once I have my plans finalized for my home, right? You know, Allie and I signed off on it. Uh, we said we were good to go with this home. What we do is now we got to go build it, right? 
we got to go build the home. So we have this plan, this architectural plan of what it looks like, the dream, and now we got to go build it. And how do you go build it, right? You go and you hire a general contractor, and then the general contractor goes and finds all of the different subcontractors that are experts in all the different parts of how to execute and build that home. Okay. That is a business. That is your business. That is, if you want to build a business, that is the framework, right? It's the exact same thing as when you're building a home, right? You have a plan, you create the architecture of that plan, right? Whatever it is that you're going to be doing, right? In, in our survey detective platform, we set it up where it's like you have, you have a, a, a section for planning, right? And then, then once you plan it, then you go and you design it, right? You know, a lot of people go in and they start designing things while they're trying to plan, but they don't even know what that plan is, right? Coming up with the plan, what the, what the questions are, what's the logic behind this, all those things, right? So when you have a plan to build a business, if you're on your own, you got to sit and think about what you're going to do, and then you got to go and execute, right? So here you come up with your plan and then you go and you execute on that plan. It's a huge difference between working on your business and working in your business. When you start off and you're a newbie, you got to do both. As you start to scale and your business gets larger and you want to uh, take it to the next level, what you want to do is you want to try to find your subcontractors, right? You want to have a, a general contractor in your company, right? And then you want to have all these subcontractors that can do the work for each specific step in your plan to build your home, to build your business, right? And what that does is it then frees up time for you as the business owner to work on growing your business externally, not internally, right? So you're ultimately helping each other, right? Because if you as a business owner go and you work on your business and you're able to do you know, a deal and a partnership, or um, maybe you merge with a company, or maybe you come up with another plan that you're going to now start to create a new revenue stream for, the business grows, right? And then same thing, right? Same thing. This is this is it, right? There's not any secret sauce to you building a successful business. Come up with a plan and you execute, right? So the idea here is that you're going to do this, right? So when you do that, right, when you're working on your business by yourself and you're ex executing, you really don't have tons of costs on the operational side, right? Uh, you know, we call them ops, right? Ops, uh, all the things that, that you would pay, salaries, things of that nature, right? Um, payroll taxes, health insurance, and, and like a ton of other things I'm not going to get into, right? But like, you know, when you're by yourself, you don't have any of those costs. And that's great, right? And maybe you could do it on your own. Maybe you can scale a business doing it. But at some point, you might want somebody to help you just take it over and run the business. You're just stressed or you just, you want to live your life and, and do different things. And it's just been years that you've been doing that, that you just need to change, right? So you go out and you hire people, right? You start to build your business uh, with other people doing things that you were doing. You teach them how to do it, right? You come up with your little org chart, right? So it's like, uh, here you are, and you have your team, right? With all the different pieces of a business, right? If you have good structure, it flows from the top. And then each one of these positions is a role, and the business flows, right? And that could be you right here, CEO. And then you start filling these positions. When you start thinking about, well, what are all the things I do? What do I do when I execute this plan, right? And you start to kind of map it out and then comes up with different um, roles within the company and you figure out which ones are the most important that you need. And you do it in a way where you're bringing people in and the business will grow, but the revenue has to support the people you're bringing in and the growth, or you're going to make less money. Right now, some people have been doing this for years and they want to bring people in because to them, having others work in their business, right, while you're working on the business, it takes them away from the day to day of what they've been doing for a long time to get it to this, this place. Right. And now they need to figure out who in that, that plan, who's going to execute, who's the most important. 
So you start bringing one at a time, right? And you start figuring it out, you know? So if you have a certain amount of revenue coming in, you got, you got to play with your operational costs of what can you afford? What is your allowable? Like, what can you pay these people, right? The same way, like when we're media buying and we're arbitraging media and we're figuring out like, what's our allowable? What, what, what can we pay to acquire a lead or acquire a customer, right? It's all based on what we're getting paid, what the revenue is, right? Same thing here with your business. What can you afford to pay people? And ideally, as you grow, they grow with you, right? And they make more money and, you know, they're excited, you're excited and, and awesome, right? But so I want to show you guys something here because I see so many of, of these entrepreneurs doing this. And then I look at and, and ask them what their numbers are and they don't know. One, they don't know. And then two, some of them aren't even profitable. And they're, they're, they're walking up on stage, getting their two comma club awards, and they have no idea how much money they're really, really making at the end of the day, but they walk home. With. And I want to kind of go over that a little bit so that you can understand how this works. Okay. Now I'm sharing my screen right here. I'm also going to take some notes, but here's the deal, right? As I talk you through this, you have your total revenue line. So this is how much money you would make in a month. Okay. Here's your month. So here's how much money you're making in a month. Here's how much money you're making in a year. Okay. So if you're somebody that's doing $250,000 a month in, in, in revenue, in top line revenue, selling whatever your, whatever your plan is, you're executing, you're making 250 k right? Well, if you have 50% of COGS and 25% of operational costs, you need to understand that and know those numbers to see what's happening in your business and see if you're where you want to be. What does that mean? Like the cogs, the cost of goods sold, right? So ultimately, um, when you go out and you're generating revenue, everything you're doing to generate that revenue is a cost. And then you have a gross margin, right? So the gross revenue margin means how much did you make? How much did it cost for you to make that? And that's the gross revenue for your business, right? So even in that case, right? Um, oh, wow. Well, I, I'm making uh, two commas and I'm working on 80%. So, you know, $800,000 is my cost. So I have 200K, right? Well, depending on what's going on in your business, you need to know what your operational costs are and where that nets at, right? In addition to all the taxes that get involved, that are a whole other story. I just want to talk you through this as different scenarios because I've seen so many different entrepreneurs and I want you to see four different businesses and what's going on. I have a business here that does 250K a month. I have a business over here that does 500K a month, right? So, and every one of these companies is very, very different. The more revenue you do, things change, right? If, if you have a business where you're scaling your business, and all of a sudden you're starting to scale to a place where you really want to take it to the next level and you have to hire people. Well, there's a, there's other issues there than just the go and make money part, right? There's the, the part of where you need to be able to actually execute and do it at, in, a, in a bigger way. You may need more people, right? And, um, as you grow as a company, you need to learn how to do that. And it's hard. It's not easy, right? There's people out there that can help you. But so I just want to show you this, right? And show you the difference. So you have four companies. One does 250, one does 500K, another one does 750,000, another one does 5 million a month, okay? So if you look down here, the total is they're doing $3 million in top line revenue, gross revenue. This one's doing 6 million in top line, 9 million top line company three, and 60 million for company four, okay? Now, here is where you need to look and understand what's going on. Here's your cost of goods sold percentage, and here's your operational cost. You have to know those numbers. I can guarantee you go ask 10 business owners, hey, what's the, the, the cost of goods sold percentage and what's your operational cost percentage, right? What's your net margin percentage? I'm almost confident nine out of 10 probably couldn't answer that for you, and maybe 10 out of 10, right? And that's like mind boggling to me. Right. It's like you don't even know how much money they're making or losing in some cases. Right. So if I show you this in this scenario, 
right? You're out and you're you're creating a plan, and you got to tell either your salespeople or you, you as as the person as the affiliate or the person arbitraging the leads, right? You need to know what your allowable is, but you also need to know what kind of margin you want to work on, right? There there are people that work on twenty percent margin, thirty percent margin. Yeah, you got to figure out like what works for you, right? In a scenario like this, where twenty five percent of the operational costs are going to this business, right? Well, two hundred fifty k, fifty percent is COGS. So if you look here, you're spending one hundred eighty seven thousand dollars a month to generate two hundred fifty thousand dollars in top line revenue. So your net. Your walk away is sixty-two thousand five hundred. You guys get that? And if you take it down here for the year, here's times twelve, right? So three million. You're spending two point two five to generate that three million dollars. So you're netting seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in twelve months, right? So what are you doing? for the twelve months, right? So that is sixty-five. If you wanted to scale your business, let's say. To five hundred thousand dollars. Well, you could take some money from your net margin of six two five and go hire somebody, right? Now, you could still work. Yeah, it still work at a fifty percent, right? Well, in that scenario, you're hiring a new worker. The revenue is going up. It supports the hire. It's working. So you end up making one point five million dollars in that business. Let's say that. You know, you start to scale, and now your costs of goods sold are going up. So now, what does that mean, right? To to acquire a customer, to acquire uh, uh, in the affiliate marketing, to just get an offer out in the market and make money, it may be costing you more money. Maybe the costs of Facebook are going up. Maybe things aren't converting as well. Maybe the advertiser isn't paying as much as they used to for whatever that specific business is. Right? Maybe they used to pay you a, a, a cost per acquisition of $100 a sale and they load it to 80. If your costs stay the same, you're going to make less money, which means you're going to work on less margins. Right? Does that make sense? So, in that scenario, what happens? You got to go back and figure something out. Right? You got to go look. You know, you had a plan, you were executing that plan. It's working great. But all of a sudden, your cost of goods sold went up. And if you're not paying attention, you're going to be making less money. Right? So if you see here, if it went up to six, let's say that happened, right? And you didn't hire anybody in the business stayed the same. You just went from making 750K a year to $300,000 a year. Dude, that ain't cool. And you're going to go at the end of the year to your account and your account's going to show you your tax return. But what? Dude, what are you talking about? How do I only make 300K? Well, your revenue stayed the same. Your Ops cost stayed the same. You didn't hire anybody, but your cost of goods sold went up 15%. Well, why did my cost of goods sold go up 15%? You go and you analyze your business, you look, and you recognize that your advertisers were paying you less, or it was costing you more money to acquire that sale, that the media costs more, right? Whatever that is then damn, you got to go figure it out, right? Because business doesn't just stay as is all the time. It's it's changing all the time. You got to be looking at your numbers. You got to be paying attention, you know, at least monthly, right? Now, if you want to be back at the 50% and you have sales guys, well, you got to go talk to them and say, guys, listen, the business that we're doing here with this partner was great. But when they lowered our payout, it changed things. It's just not as exciting as it used to be, right? Let's say that we went up to $325,000 in revenue per month versus 250. We're still making more money on the $250,000 a month. We're still making more, right? 750K, we're making 390 here, right? I mean, I put some things here where I just showed different revenue numbers playing around, right? So like, you know, 400. Well, at 65%, right? If if the advertiser is going to pay you less, well, either you got to increase the margins or you got to be able to do more volume, right? So for this business to be worth it, to actually be on par, let's say, let's say you do a million dollars. So if you do a million, look at that. You guys, look at that. For you guys, let me just show you these numbers. Crazy. 
for you to make more money than you did over here, you would have to do an extra $400,000 in top line revenue to be able to make 780 grand a month uh, in a year, right? You'd be making $7.8 million top line, right? So you can go get your two comma club. Maybe you're close to the 10 million that people are talking about. And that's amazing. Going up and getting their $10 million uh, award, which is great. And then this guy over here, who only did 3 million versus their 7.8, right? He almost did $4 million more than him, but he's making more money. This guy's making more money over here. Company one is making more money. And it's so important, guys, for you guys to pay attention to that because things change in the business all the time. And when they do, you got to go back to the drawing board. You got to go and look and, and constantly analyze and optimize. Uh, it's an ever changing world. Nothing ever stays the same. You're never going to have the same deal all the time. Deals always end. Businesses always change. Time never stops. We keep getting older. As much as you think you're in control, you are not. So you got to pay attention to your business. Okay. So let me just show you some more, right? Like, so over here, this is like, this is just like accounting 101, right? Um, if you did 750K in the month and your cost of goods sold was 70%, right? So that means you're making 30%. And your operational costs are 200, sorry, 25%. You're spending $712,000 a month to generate $750,000 a month. 37,500 per month. You know, this company may have 15 employees. I mean, headache central. Uh, you're dealing with all this stuff. Uh, maybe, maybe there's another reason why you're doing it. Now, listen, if you're looking to sell your company and have an exit, sure. Um, they do care about the size. Like firms won't even come talk to you when you're, when you're too small. You know, you usually want to see like, you know, depending on the size of, of the operation that you're going to talk to and who's investing, um, you just want to see at least like seven, eight million north of $10 million in top line, right? Before they start looking into your business and investing. You know, there's other cases depending on who you're talking to. You talk to a small boutique shop. But, you know, in that scenario, you're at $9 million in top line. There could be an investment firm that might want to come in and invest you. And maybe here. Over here, where you're making your 750K, at three million, they may not even talk to you. Is it scalable? Maybe. Maybe it's not scalable. Maybe this business isn't scalable. So what would you do? Right? You'd have to come up with another plan, right? On how to grow the business. You don't want to sit and just get complacent because one day it's going to stop. It's going to go away. Right. And that's another mistake that all these entrepreneurs make is that they're making money and they just kind of sit on it, sit on their thumbs. They're never building their pipeline and hustling and doing other things to scale the business. To support the business. So if God forbid that went away, you still have other revenue streams coming in. And guess what? Hopefully it doesn't go away. And now you have two revenue streams coming in and three revenue streams. And now your business is growing. You're making more money than you could ever even thought of or dreamed of. And life's good. And everybody around you is making money also. We're all happy, right? So these are really important things you need to figure out, right? Like, you know, when you're scaling a business, Right. It's natural that if you're going to go from 250K in, in top line revenue versus going to a million dollars a month, you may have to work on smaller margins. Right. And that's OK. Right. But it has to make sense. The numbers need to work. Right. So like when you're doing that and we talk about this all the time in my, in my, in my company. Right. When you're doing that. Right. At a million at 65 percent. Right. If we're, if we can get from 250 to 1 million a month in top line revenue, you're doing 12 million a year. And now our costs go up to 65% a month. We stay at the 25% operational costs. And now we're netting $1.2 million. What is that? It's 10% net profit percentage. Right. I should show that here. Right. So, uh, here net. Margin percentage. Yeah, I just want to show you this, right? Because these are very different companies. A company over here doing $5 million in top line is massive, man. It's massive, right? Well, looking at their, their numbers, well, they're working on 20% and they have operational costs at 15%. What does that mean? Wait, 15%, 5%. 
for a company doing $5 million versus these companies over here, 750, you know, uh, 500, 250,000 top line. So their percentages are 25% of their revenue. Why would a company that's doing 5 million have a smaller percentage on the operational side? Wouldn't they have more people, right? Wouldn't they have more costs? Wouldn't the numbers be right? And the answer is yes, they would. But you got to understand, these percentages are all based off of how much money you're making, right? So if you look here, if you're making $5 million a month, only 15% of their operational costs is coming off that top line. They're still spending $750,000 a month on all of the operational costs, salaries, people, and everything else that comes with ops, right? Versus someone that's at $187,000 a month or $125,000 or $62,000, right? So like at the end of the day, it costs them $4 million to generate the $5 million on a month-to-month -month basis, and they're at 80%. So they're working at much smaller margins over here than all the other companies. They're working at 30%, right? They're at 35, they're at 50, right? So if you look, they're at a 5% net margin percentage. Look at the top line revenue, $60 million. Wow, wow, it's a big, it's a big deal, right? Yeah. You know, when you look at that, what's crazy about it is if you look here, they're making $3 million off that 60. Now, it depends on the type of business, but if you wanted to sell that company, you know, usually they want to have a sales force. They want to have some, some volume. Maybe you want to go public, right? At $60 million, they can give you a multiple on the top line or the bottom line. The bottom line is your net, it's your take home versus your top line is your total revenue. So there are times where companies will acquire other companies to get to get the revenue from them, right? They care about the net margin, but they need the revenue. They need to take their business. They need to be uh, north of, uh, let's say, 150 million, right? And currently, one company is doing 95 million, right? So when they acquire this company that's 60 million at 155 million, and now all of a sudden, maybe they can go public on the stock market and you get shares. And then people start to buy your shares and you start to create serious wealth, right? And the whole plan there, right, is, yeah, you have your business you're running and, and you're only working on a 5% net margin for this current business. But now the stock market starts to trade and there's X amount of outstanding shares. You get, let's say, a million shares from selling this company. So you have a million shares of the parent company. And now the stock IPO is at $10. Guess what? That stock to you is worth $10 million. There's no cost to that. You, you're a shareholder. You, you have $10 million of stock. That has nothing to do with the 5% that you're making within the company. That's, you know, that's definitely more detail on strategies that companies have, but it's massive. So, you know, so there's a lot of different things that all comes down to. What is your plan? What is your plan? What kind of company do you want? What is your what is your plan? Right. And when you have a plan, you got to think about it as what is your well. First off, you got to have a, like an overall like what's my plan for this year, right? So a yearly plan, right? But where do I want to be in three years and in five years, right? Rome wasn't built in, in one day, right? You want to have a a, a business doing $60 million, you don't realize how fast a business can grow. When you work hard and you find something that's working, could you go from doing 500 grand a month to 5 million a month? The answer is absolutely yes. Within three years, absolutely yes. Everybody like these entrepreneurs, everybody, like people that want to just, you know, live free, be financially free and, and make all this money, you know, there's no secret sauce. Like you don't just, make $5 million a month, right? You could do the exact same thing that you're doing, making 500 grand a month, and you just have to do it more, right? 10 times more. And the question is, is that business scalable? Do you have growth in that business? 
you could do this year, right? Where let's say all of a sudden you're doing 500 grand. Let's say, you know, you're, you're, you have some lead gen verticals, you're generating some traffic to these lead gen verticals and, you know, you're selling it to buyers, data's coming into your database, you're marketing to those, those people, trying to find things that will help them, scaling them, maybe you send them up some ladder. If you have another business, maybe you have a high ticket, high ticket coaching program. And all of a sudden, let's say somebody else over here has that same business and they're just affiliate marketers, right? Company three is an affiliate marketer. Well, let's say they're working at 70% margins, but they have two employees. Look what happens. $1.2 million. And they're working at a 20% net margin percentage of profit, right? Versus the 10% over here. You guys, I highly recommend if you have a business, you need to know these numbers. You need to know what your cogs are, your ops, operational costs are, what you're working on in a net margin percentage, not just what you're doing when you're out there generating revenue and buying traffic to get that revenue, right? Sales guys, they don't get this, right? Your sales guys don't even understand that there are other costs. So when they see it, they think you're making all this money and you're killing it, right? You may think you're killing it. And then when you look at the end of the day, boom, like there's a lot more that's going on in your business. And then, you know, Uncle Sam comes, right? So once you're north of a certain number, you know, at least what, 40, 50%? Well, depending on how you live actually, right? So let's say you're here now, you know, your taxes times 0.4, and now you're walking away with 360K from making, from making 600K in May. You know, through, listen, 360K is awesome, but you are not retiring from that. Certainly if you have a family and kids, right? It's a, it's a really nice living. Even if you're doing it over here, 1.8 million, which is sick, right? Sick. Well, you better do that a bunch of years moving forward, right? Because you just you can't just stop working for the rest of your life, right? Um, but the goal here and where you where it's a whole other conversation, but really what you want to do is once you start making money, you want that money to work for you. So you want to take the money that you earn and invest it in ways that it can work for you in a lot of different vehicles. And it doesn't matter if you're making fifty thousand dollars a year or five hundred thousand dollars a year. It doesn't matter. You start somewhere and you build. But so, guys, I wanted to come on here and talk to you guys about this because I think it's really important. You know, you got to know what's going on, and you got to be smart about your business. You know, know your numbers, know where your costs are to get your revenue, know what your operational costs, know what you're working on a net margin percentage, right? If something changes in the business, right? Maybe you're you're out here working in the business and then your sales guys start working on a lower margin, right? You, you, you're you expecting them to work at 70% of their cost of goods sold. So you want to you make 30%. And all of a sudden they start, they start working on 20%. And you don't know, you're not paying attention. And then the end of the year comes like, what, what happened? Why are, why are we making so much less money than we were? I don't get it. Well, your cost to acquire, your customers went up. So what happened was your percentages went down, right? If you look here, look, these are two very different businesses, right? Just looking at those numbers. Right here, you could look at this and you can make an argument. Company three has 80% cost to acquire the customers, right? Get traffic and make money. So you're working on 20% margin. You have 10% of your ops costs going to, to help people helping you, right? Versus over here, you're working on 35% margin, right? So 65% is your cogs. But 25% of your costs are going to people. Well, at the end of the day, the numbers end up being the same. Their cost is 450. Their cost is 450. They're netting $50,000 a month. They're both making $600,000 a month. This guy over here, the owner of this business is working in their business, executing, sweating, doesn't have a life. This guy over here is, is working on his business, on his business to grow it. And he's playing golf. He's, he's going on vacations and he's, and he's living a good life. Right. And the bottom line is the same. They're both making 600K a year. Right. Now, the question is, 
What kind of lifestyle do you want? What kind of business do you want? What are your goals? You need to know this. You need to answer these questions. You guys got to sit down, think about what do you want? What do you want? I want to make a lot of money. I hear that all the time. No, duh. Yeah, me too. I want to make a lot of money. I just want to make a lot of money. I just want to make. Okay, that's great. I do too. All right. And we'll get there. Obviously, we're going to get there. That's the, that's the goal. We're going to, we're going to work to make you a lot of money. But in what way? How do you want to do it? Right. And it's, it's, it's easier to say these things when you've done it already. When you're getting started, it's, it's a lot harder. Right. Because you just got to hustle and you got to do it yourself. And then you get to a certain point where you just got to figure out, you know, what do you want to do? Where, you know, you may be in the situation right now. Like you have a successful business, you're doing great, but you don't see the light of day, right? Um, you don't get to hang out with your kids. You, know, you don't get to go out with your girlfriend or, or your husband, right? And the, the vacation's not happening, right? Or when you go on vacation, you are so stressed. Oh, I can't remember when I first started my business a bunch of years, met in probably the first like five years, easy. I couldn't not get stressed on my vacations. I'd have a few days by the middle of vacation, I'd be like so anxious. I just want to get out of there. I want to get home because when I'm working, I felt better, right? Because I didn't know what was happening. No one was doing any work if I was on vacation, right? So like, there's, there's something to be said about that, you know? Now with that said, yeah, you can sacrifice some, some revenue, right? Because over here, this business owner is deciding to spend 25% on people and ops to have a life, to have a good life. One, yeah, he might be sacrificing on the revenue, but one can make the argument, right? Well, he's working on 35% margins. What happens if he's able to go find more traffic, pay a little bit more, but not, not a ton more, you know, 5% more? What happens to his business? He's at 65 is that right? Now he starts to pay 70%. Look what happens to his business? <coughs> He's making half of what he was making. Like, right? going up five points. Crazy, right? Well, he's got more people. But guess what? If you have more people, they need to be executing, and your business should stay. You should be making more money. Right? And this number should go up. This revenue number should go up. How much? I don't know. Seven fifty? Nope. Still not making enough. Seventy percent loss. A million? I do double the revenue to work at thirty percent margin and have all those people. So this guy's got a lot of help. It's likely he's carrying some dead weight. It's likely someone can come in and look at this and say, you know, you got twenty five percent of your 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 costs going to operations, and when I look at your roster, you have 10 employees, and really you could generate this million dollars a month with four people. There are six people you're carrying that are just taking money out of your pocket. Either have a conversation with them and figure out how they can turn something around, or something's got to get, right? Or you're just going to make less money, right? And there's no reason why you should be taking money out of your family's money. So, you know, this is percentage to 15%. And look what happens. Well, he's able to do the million for the four people. Now, he's got a net margin of $1.8 million that he's making because he's able to operate the business more efficiently by building systems and processes, maybe having some 1099s, you know, consultants, right, that work for less money, that do more of the busy work. If you just get organized and know what needs to happen, Guys, this is really important. This is a, a really important you know, thing that you guys need to understand. So do me a favor. Know your cogs. Know your, your ops calls. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, shoot me a text. 917-636-1998. That's uh, my text community. I get text messages there all the time. I try to get through them as best I can. I try to answer the questions. I try to do videos if I, if I have the same question asked multiple times. And if you're not subscribed here, subscribe, right? Um, turn your notifications on. Uh, really appreciate that. And if you think this would be helpful for somebody, forward it to them. And love to, love to get some feedback from you guys. You know, give a thumbs up if you like it. 
Thumbs down if you don't. If you want to comment, let me know. Let me know how you're feeling. I love to hear what's going on. You know, am, am I crazy? Am I, am, I, am I way off here? All you business owners, all you entrepreneurs, right? Am I way off? Am I, you know, I totally know my numbers. What are you talking about? Okay. Well, then if, if, if I am, I apologize. But in my experience, when I sit down with business owners, they do not know these numbers. And it's really, really important. And I love this stuff, right? Because then you can kind of figure out, like, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you take this and, and tie it to your org chart? That's what I love about it, right? So you, you can, you know, <clears throat> the best case scenario is you have your, your org chart, and then you have your PL that's attached to this that tells you what's going on here, like where all the costs are, right? Right? That guy's costing me three times as much, and the output isn't there. It's cool. It's really cool. I mean, it's just numbers. It's just, it's the same thing as building a house, same thing as building a house to build a business. And uh, I truly believe every single person can do it. Certainly, listen, in the affiliate marketing space, you're, you're taking somebody else's offer and getting them distribution. You don't have an offer. You're pushing it out into the marketplace. I think in 2021, they did like 7 billion, 7 billion. Yeah, that's right. And it's growing. I think they projected like eight something billion next year, uh, 2022, which we're then. In the lead gen world, people buying leads. I believe that that industry 2021 was about a little bit over 3 billion spent on leads and supposedly growing 10% year over year, right? So soon enough, 3.5 billion, 4 billion, 4.5 billion. It's all performance marketing. We're all performance marketers, right? If you're in affiliate marketing, if you're doing any lead gen arbitrage, you are a performance marketer. You're driving results. You're getting paid on a result. You have measurements that can show ah, this works. This works. It works for you. It works for me, right? And it's a, it's a great business. And it's a skill set that anybody can learn if they want to. And I believe you can do it. Hope this was helpful. Uh, hope you guys are, are having fun out there. It's starting to get nice out. So make sure you get out and have some fun with your, your friends and family. And uh, keep working hard because uh, perseverance is everything. Uh, if you want it, go get it. Because the only person that can decide when it's over is you. No one else. Don't listen to anybody else. If you want to make this happen, you can do this. So what if it doesn't take you as fast as other people? You're on your own clock. Do you focus on you, believe in yourself, and never, ever, ever be afraid to fail? With that said, all you performance marketers, I'm out. So uh, bless you all. Thanks for being here and watching this, and I will uh, talk to you guys soon. All right, later. 